On today's episode of Survival Dispatch News, we're with Bill Gallagher at Solar Fit in Daytona Beach, Florida. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by USCCA, your source for education, training, and self-defense liability insurance. And we're back, and once again, we're joined by Bill Gallagher from Solar Fit in Daytona Beach, Florida. He was a pioneer in the industry and started this business in 1975. Good to see you, Bill. Thank you, Chris. I'll tell you, I have to laugh every time you call me a pioneer. I went out and bought a Daniel Boone hat. <laughs> Uh, well, so being a solar pioneer, right, uh, right. starting Solar Fit in 1975, uh, tell us about the history of the company. Yeah, so I came down from the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York, 1970, to go to Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, learn how to fly, fly upside down, all that stuff that I, I call my uh, unusual attitude adjustment. <laughs> okay. but I still like to do that, but uh, Started this business in 1975, so we're in our, I think, our 48th year right now. And boy, we've seen a lot, of, a lot of stuff in that time, yeah. Yeah, that, that's absolutely amazing. So I'm um, explaining some of the, you know, crazy stuff that you've seen over the years. Like the evolution of the business. More yeah, than it's anything. pretty crazy. So, you know, being from the Adirondacks and up in the mountains, you, you, you're just a little bit off to start with, right? In case any of my friends are watching this, I grew up in a town <laughs> called Irish Town. Everyone was Irish. Uh, if you went to look at the gravestones there, you'd just be amazed at uh, the Lens, the Flins, the McGins, the Gallagher's. They're all they're all they're all uh, resting there. But um, kind of uh, what I would call fiercely independent, right? Okay. You know, we love the environment. We love hunting and fishing and all those things. But uh, I kind of instilled that in me. And my father was uh, really loved auto racing, so I came down here to Daytona to begin to get involved in auto racing and airplane flying and stuff like that. And I started this business in 1975 and there was no one really in that space at the time. So um, you could not buy a solar panel. So we had to make them. Interesting. So, so we would actually make uh, boxes and, and get a copper plate and sweat copper tubing to it and make a solar panel. And, um, so and what for hot water for hot water or pool heating, mostly, mostly solar thermal for, heating water in the home, but okay. also pool heating. We take 6,000 feet of pipe and put it up on the top of a condominium. And, you know, I'd figure out how the gallons per minute flow and everything and put it all together and get the right pump size. And I just really, really like that. Then over time, uh, they started making solar panels. And then after a while, uh, we stopped the production of it to go buy panels. And then that more from solar thermal into solar electric, which we've been doing a lot of now for about the past 15 years. Okay. That's, that's really what's where the evolution is now from solar thermal to solar electric. Interesting. But I have to assume in Florida that the thermal still... Uh, a fairly decent component for the industry. We still do a lot of solar thermal, both okay. residential and commercial. We just finished the YMCA here oh, in no Holly Hill. Uh, we just finished Pictona with a solar power system. And, you know, locally, uh, if you're familiar with Hudson Furniture, these guys are really yeah. cool guys. We just finished the facility in Sanford and the one in Norman Beach, and we're doing the one in Ocala now along with some dealerships and stuff like that. So solar is, is taken off like a rocket. Really. Yeah, that's really interesting. And, and Hudson's a you know very reputable company that's cool. done exceptionally well. Cool people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Josh, right? Josh, yeah. and Adam, uh, and I knew their dad too that, he, that started the business, but that, that business has exploded and they're doing so well. Yeah, good for, good for them, guys. good for them. Yeah. So, Bill, you mentioned uh, PV systems, uh, photovoltaic systems, like electricity generation has right. become a much bigger thing in the past 15 years. Um, you know, we've been friends for about 10 years, and I know there's some big differences in quality of panels. Could you educate us on that a little bit? Yeah, I think it's important that people know the difference between a quality product and something that may not last. Uh, I don't know if people are familiar with a solar cell, but this little tiny guy right here, is a solar cell and I've got it in this little plastic bag. Okay. Just so that you can see the differences between that. And this is another solar cell and they're both in plastic bags, as you can see, and I'm going to show you this one first. So what, how this whole thing works is the sun comes up in the morning, the photons strike the silicon. Okay. okay and it excites electrons that start moving around and attach themselves to little grid lines that are on the back of the solar panel. Okay. So this is a cell. If you have a, a bunch of cells together, it makes an array. Um, 
makes a module, a bunch of them together makes an array, and you build the whole system out of it. So this is, this panel, little cell here, if you can see it, you can see me moving it back and forth, and you can imagine the wind blowing and the amount of pressures and tensions of stuff. And you, you notice that I can bend this thing without it breaking, it kind of almost like a an airplane wing wobbling along. Yeah. Know? Then I take this other one, which is a similar type thing, and would you like to do this, Chris? Uh, I give it a try. Okay. I've just seen you do this with other people. Very I've never cool. done it myself. So. Okay. so if you just take it real in the middle and just kind of bend it a little bit. Oh, darn it. Chris, you broke that son of a gun. Let me I see. don't have to pay for that, do I? <laughs> okay. So, so Chris destroyed the solar panel, which is fine. Well, Chris <laughs> destroys a lot of stuff. So. <laughs> but the moral, the moral of the story is there's different quality panels, and you, you want to make sure you don't end up with something like this. So this is a pr pr proprietary cell. This is what we use doing in our solar products. So, I mean, I know we have uh, some uh, pretty strict building codes now in Florida. You know, after 0405, we went from the most lenient building codes to some of the toughest in the world, if not the world, you know, between Miami-Dade NOAs, as well as the code for the rest of Florida. And a lot of that was predicated on the wind loads that we see. So I have this vague recollection of you speaking in the past to this subject that uh, constant exposure to, to, you know, high wind loads causes that type of breakdown. Maybe not quite that dramatic, but breaks down the, uh, you know, the continuity. Exactly. Yeah, that's okay. what could happen. Uh, several different things. First of all, you've got expansion and contraction. We've got a lot of that and here in Florida. We could have uh, 32 degree temperatures in the winter. And then in the, in the afternoon, it might go up to 80 degrees. Well, that's over 100 degrees difference. So you okay. have to have some a cell that's resilient to doing that. And the same thing with the wind. When you have winds up to 120, 130 miles an hour, you got to have something substantial to, to do that. And that's what this does. Okay, that's interesting. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a layman uh, on the solar stuff for the most part. I saw somebody recently say that, I don't know, there was, uh, you know, your typical solar panel was productive for about 10 years and I, I thought it was greater than that. Is that more so like the, if you buy like a, a cheaper unit, it's got a, a much more limited lifespan than a higher end unit? Yeah, absolutely. That's called degradation. So every solar module or panel or module is rated based on their degradation. So okay. uh, uh, on year one, you may have 98% uh, production and year 25 it may go down as low as 75 percent okay okay so uh, a high quality panel such as the one that we're showing you here uh in year 25 is still at like 92 percent holy cow yeah so that makes a difference when you think about it when you when you're sizing a system um when you're dropping from uh 98 percent down to 82 percent it you you really need to think about adding more solar modules at a certain period of time where with the higher quality you wouldn't have to you know. yeah so as you know you know background in the tech industry and when you there's a distinction to be made between initial cost of acquisition and total cost of ownership over the service life of whatever you know is being discussed so that's interesting what you just said so you might pay a little bit more for the initial cost of acquisition for a high quality panel but because its lifespan is significantly longer than a cheap panel, the total cost of ownership at the end, in the end is actually cheaper just to you know, buy the higher quality stuff out of the gate. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. You've got two things. You've got price. You've got cost. The price is what you pay for it initially. The cost is what it costs of ownership. So a higher quality solar panel like this is much less expensive long term over, over the haul. That's what you're looking for. You, you don't want to spend a certain amount of money and six years down the road have to do it again, all right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I appreciate the demonstration. This one's Thanks. always a good one. Thanks I've seen you do it a few times, so you know, <laughs> kind of cheated. Um, do you want to talk about some of the stuff on the wall back here in a minute? Sure. Be good. Okay. So, Bill, you've got, uh, you know, some demonstration equipment here. Let's start at the beginning. Maybe you can give us a description. Sure. Chris, this is a 80 gallon solar water heating tank, you know, where your conventional water heating tank would have two elements. It would have one here and one here, and each of those elements would be 4,500 watts. So basically what that means is every time someone turns the faucet on in the home, the hot water leaves the hot water tank going in that direction. The cold okay. water comes in and it triggers that element to come on. Now, 4,500 watt element is just like turning on 4,500 watt light bulbs. 
Okay. So if your mom or dad caught you doing that, it would be a severe punishment. Yeah, Turn sure off would. the lights, Billy. Come on, Chris. What are you brought up in a barn? How many times we hear that, right? Yeah. Okay, so with a solar tank, we don't have a bottom element. We have an upper element as a backup element okay. just in case we have inclement weather. But we have a little circulating pump and an automatic temperature control and, and a sensor down here that actually sends the water up to the solar panel. And in this case, we use what we call a solar thermal panel, which is this right here. Okay. So the water, cold water that's in the bottom, go, runs up through here and out the top, uh, top part of it. And this is all copper absorber plate. So we're taking that water that's cooler running in it and we're superheating it and sending it back to the tank. So through stratification, we fill the whole tank full 80 gallons of hot water a day, which okay. means you're not running that element and it means additional savings for the customer. Very, very popular. Interesting. Yeah, very popular. Then we have over here, we have actually a solar electric module. So this is kind of interesting. If we're talking about thermal, we call them panels. If we're okay. talking about electric, we call them modules. It's okay. still a panel, but this is a module. Gotcha. And this is, this is what actually harnesses the sun's energy and puts it right into your electric grid to reduce your cost. And so this is full of the cells that we looked at in the plastic bags. Yep, you can't so, really see them, but there's <clears> actually <throat> cells going all the way through here. Okay. And this would be called a module and everything is attached directly into the trusses. So there's no possibility of leaks or anything like that. Interesting. And the more modules we have, the more money we save. Yeah. And we have solar attic fans, which are really cool because it has a solar cell embedded right into the fan itself. So the sun comes up in the morning and strikes the solar cell. This actually has a Mercedes uh, brushless motor in it. Nice. So if you never had a Mercedes in your garage, you can have one on your roof. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I don't remember the numbers, but I do have a vague recollection. You mentioned it in the past. So attic temperature without this type of fan versus with this type of fan, what's the drop? So here in Florida, because of our intense temperature, we can see 160 degrees in our attic. Holy cow. Yeah, we can drop it down to really as, as little as ambient temperature outside. So if the outside temperature is 90, we could, maybe we can get it down to 90 or 100. Okay. When you think about this, you know, your air conditioning ducts are running through your attic. Yes. Yeah. They're in a hostile environment. So every degree that we can reduce that temperature is going to prolong the life of the roof. Uh, save save energy. Yeah, really, that's really cool. that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Then these uh, other things like the solar pool heating is like a really big part of our business now because here in Florida or anywhere, if you don't have some type of heat in your pool, you just can't use the pool. Yeah, right? you get maybe three months of enjoyment here uh, without you know without heat with supplementary heat like that. You can go as much as nine or ten months, and all you do is set the temperature. It's all automatic rotates the valve, sends the water up there through the solar panel, heats it, and now you got a warm pool. Yeah, so years ago I had one of these, wasn't as sophisticated as that control panel, and more than once uh, I turned it on in the early summer and forgot to turn it back off mm -hmm. again and came out the next day and my pool temperature was over 100 degrees. It could happen. These things are amazingly efficient. They are very efficient, yeah. so that's why the automatic control, you know, makes makes perfect sense, you know. Man, that, that's great information, Bill. Yeah. So, Bill, I see you've got some uh, additional stuff over here. This is, there's cold air coming out of this. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, this is a solar powered mini split uh, heat pump. Okay. So, no we've kidding. got, yeah, okay, yeah, it's really, really cool. We've got three solar panels up on the roof that are actually operating this during the daytime. It automatically segues back at night to a 240 volt power. So, Solar power, man, this is this very, very little energy. This thing uses about 700 watts of energy compared to a conventional, like a four ton, maybe four or 5,000 watts. Yeah. Really, really important when you're talking about uh, battery backup. Yeah, this is, I can't believe how cold the air is yeah, coming out. It's doing this whole, and it's nice and room. quiet. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I think I recognize this next piece here. Yeah, so we had the Mercedes over there, right? So now we're into the yeah. car industry. Now we got the Tesla over here. All so right. it's very similar to, uh, the battery package in the Tesla automobiles itself, this actually has 13,500 watt hours of energy. Storage, Significant. Right? So we can put these one, two together like that. Now we've got 27,000 watt hours. And we have one customer that we're installing now down at Ponce Inlet that has 10 of these. Holy cow. Yeah, which is like a lot. Wow. Yeah, which is like a lot. 135,000 uh, watt hours of energy. But Amazing. The, whole, the whole idea is if the grid were to go down for one reason or another, you've got battery backup power. Amazing. And there is a distinction here in Florida. 
where they pulled the uh, governor Scott's admin pulled that fast one. I think it was after Matthew or during Matthew that if you have solar in the state of Florida, you have to have a battery backup to run it during a grid down situation, theoretically to protect crews, which is not the case because they switch off just like a generator, but it effectively doubled the cost of a PV system if you want to use it when the grid's down, correct? Yeah, you know, and it's, it's really interesting when you when you talk about the economics of solar, which I'm sure we'll get to in another, yeah. another uh, part here, but I always think of that, I think of solar power as an economic driver to save us money, okay? okay. So we, we can afford groceries or health or health thing, okay? Okay. I think of batteries as insurance. So we insure our car, we insure our health, we insure everything, yeah. but we don't insure our power. So that's what these babies do. Okay. Solar power comes up, fills this battery full. If the grid goes down for any reason, the batteries operate the critical loads in the home. Interesting. That's a, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, it just makes sense. I, it, it's really, when you think about it, you amortize the cost of a battery backup system over a period of time, it's a fraction of what we're paying for insurance for everything else. Right. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you ever yeah. lived through one of these uh, power outages. I'm sure you have, Chris, like we all have. Yeah. It is, like, miserable. It, it definitely. Miserable. Well, hurricane season is extremely hot and humid here. Yeah, so, this is no fun. Yeah, so if you don't if you don't have something like this or uh, even a generator, we'll talk about that more, but, I mean, you're faced with the prospect of losing the groceries in your refrigerator, yep. the grocery at the, and, then, and then maybe trying to find a place over in Orlando or Gainesville to stay this allows you to, to have a level of comfort and safety in your house. Big deal. Yeah, you know, and some pundits are going to say, well, just go buy, you know, a gas generator or whatever. Um, we've seen situations here where there's no gas for exactly. all kinds of different reasons. Exactly. And a really crazy story, you know, when Charlie hit us, there was a rash of generator thefts where people were taking, you know, these cheap lawnmowers that they could buy for next to nothing on Craigslist. Yeah. And they would sneak up to people's homes at night while the generator is running. They'd start the lawnmower up, turn the generator off and walk off with it. And if people heard anything, they'd be, oh yeah, the generator's still running. They'd get up the next morning and all their power's gone. There was a huge number of generators stolen. Yeah, yes. I mean, we had uh, we were in the shores at the time, Daytona Beach Shores. We had no power for three weeks. Um, there were places in New Smyrna that had no power for upwards of three months after Charlie. It was a cat five, but, uh, you know what, <laughs> you, when you can't get gas, this has still got power and somebody's not likely going to steal your Tesla power wall inside your garage that's bolted to the wall. Right, exactly. Whereas a, a portable gas generator, they're pretty hot items for theft. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You brought up a very important part to it, Chris, when you think about it, like the generators are great and they serve the purpose and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, what happens when we have a prolonged outage getting fuel to that generator? I mean, we, we they close the bridges. Mm -hmm. We can't get across the bridge. So how's somebody going to deliver gas because we live on the peninsula? That's right. Here? It's like, you know. Yeah, I mean, just on a side note there, <clears throat> I don't think a lot of people realize that at 39 miles an hour in the state of Florida, all of the bridges across the intracoastal are shut down. Nothing but, you know, first responders, and even then it's very little traffic. So 39 mile an hour ain't very much, okay. you know, when you have a significant hurricane coming through. You know, the other thing that I think about occasionally, probably more than I should, is uh, security issues, right? When, yep. when the grid is down for one day, it's not a problem. Two days, four, five days, all of a sudden, seven days, security becomes a huge uh, issue because people uh, with not the best intentions are prowling around doing uh, things that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You know, so you got to keep your security system fired up and running. And the least expensive way to do it really is the sun's energy and some kind of a battery backup. You know? Yeah, uh, that's a great point, Bill. Um, well, let's sit down and uh, discuss uh, some of the value adds of solar. And a really hot topic these days is off-grid versus grid down power. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. All right. Uh, Bill, before we get into all the value adds for solar, and, and it's a long list, um, let's let's talk off grid versus grid down. Get your thoughts on that. Okay, so grid down is kind of what we were talking about uh, earlier with the Tesla Powerwall. So the grid goes down. You've got a solar power system. You've got your battery supply. Depending on the critical loads, we we have a critical load panel. We break out whatever you want to put in there. Good to go power. What happens here, Chris, as you're aware, is we have beautiful weather, then we have a violent storm, then we have beautiful weather, which fortuitously allows us to charge that panel back up because the weather is sunny. Makes right? sense. So that, that would be 
like a grid down situation, an off grid situation was, I guess what you could think of is well, a couple of different things. One, you think cabin, you think up in the mountains, yeah. there are no power lines. There's no way to get any power to it. So you've got uh, solar panels and you've got a battery bank and you're just running off whatever God gave you. So uh, just to be clear, you know, on the battery side of things that, you know, when we do have overcast conditions, we're, we're not generating the full, you know, wattage that the panels can create under optimum situations. When it's nighttime, the panels aren't generating anything. So the batteries are, are a necessary piece of the equation, right? So if, you want to, if you're going to be running 24-7. Correct. Yeah. You have to have some kind of something to get you through the evening or in inclement weather, and that's where the batteries come in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. So uh, let's just speak in general terms as far as this point in time, you know, January 2023, the the values. Why would somebody buy a solar system? What's the value to them? And um, like I say, I'm sure there's some stuff that's applicable today that wasn't applicable in years gone by. Well, what's happening, Chris, uh, now is we're seeing a rapid increase in utility rates. It's not just gradual anymore. And we understand that to a certain degree because when we have these hurricanes or anomalies, uh, the utility companies have to keep us safe, yeah. right? So they, they're hardening the grid and they're, they're paying for uh, bringing people in to clean up the hurricane and all this costs money. Well, the way that the, the utilities are made whole is they, uh, they go ahead and spend the money and then they go to the Public Service Commission, they get approval to, to get reimbursed. Well, every time the reimbursement happens, of course, the rates have to go up because they are rate based. Okay. So it's not just something that happens out of the blue. It's just, okay, the rates go up. Well, the rate, when the rates go up, the thing you, the thing you think about is uh, where does that money come from to pay for the additional? So let's suppose your electric bill was $280 right now and the rates continue to go up in five years from now, it's $390. Where does that additional money come from? So you could go to your boss and ask for a raise. Hardly ever works. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That doesn't work. Okay, you can get a second job. Okay, but what if what if you know what if you're uh, what if you're on uh, medication? Yeah. You know, who's going to feed the kids? Where does this money come from? So what people are doing now is they're saying, you know what, I'm going to invest in a system that's going to protect my family from here on out, and that's what's happening. Interesting. And, you know, we had some changes. The, the solar tax credit was on the decline. It was going to be phased out. Now it's uh, extended through 2032, correct? Correct. At 30%? Right. Yeah. So it was, it was scheduled to go from 26% down to 22%, then down to 10%, and then poof, gone. Okay. Um, they, they passed the bill, gosh, what, nine, seven, eight, nine months ago now, yeah. where uh, it, it'll extend it for 10 years at 30%, which is really great. It's great for our country. It's great for citizens that want to be able to supply their own energy needs. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I love, I love our friends with the utilities. I think that they, sh they're doing a fine job and stuff like that. And I want their families to be safe and prosperous forever. But you know, our, we also want our customers to have the ability to power their homes if they want to not be penalized for it and, and make their lives a little better. And there's room for both utility scale and for residential, which we call distributed solar. Um, so I have a question for you. It's a topic we haven't discussed probably in five years, just looking for an update on it. Um, there was a point in time when we dove into a spreadsheet that you had that was extremely comprehensive, covered every angle. and. Um, I was looking at it and it appeared to me that financing a solar system was cheaper than buying a solar system. So I asked you if there were some formulas broken in the spreadsheet and, and you showed me how it worked. And five years ago, it was cheaper to, to finance a system than to shell out all the money. Now, I know interest rates have gone up and all that sort of stuff. Where does that stand today? Well, I think, I think what's happened is we've got uh, more people going into the finance space there's more product available. Uh, it's it's absolutely well. It's not a surety because the customer would have to have access to the sun, would have to have a roof that's in good condition, right? Would have to have enough roof space. So there's all these qualifiers. Whether or not they'd have to have reasonable credit, but for for no money down, actually that's not true. We charge them a dollar. 
okay, we'll charge a dollar only to, to let them know that, look, you know what, it's a, it's a dollar. Okay, everyone can afford the dollar, but from there okay. on out, if everything uh, works and the stars align, it will cost them less to own the solar fit system than it would to continue to pay electricity. Now it's for everyone, everyone. Okay? Yeah. But going back to that, if, if someone had the cash and uh, you say you had cash sitting somewhere and it wasn't making a great return, we know what that's like. Yeah. We? Yeah, uh, you know our four hundred one k everything. They, okay. Yeah. Well, say they're say they're making three percent on their money, and that three percent really isn't all theirs because they have to pay tax on That's that. Right. So now they're walking away with one and a half, one point eight percent. They might as well keep it under the pillow. Well, if they take that money and they put it in a solar power system that's giving them seven, eight, nine percent interest, uh, interest, okay. tax free. That's pretty good, and it's increasing the value of the home at the same time. So this is to me is like. This is the biggest no-brainer ever. Yeah. And the question is, well, why doesn't everyone do it? They just don't know about it. The only thing I got to say right now, Chris, and you know me well enough to, to know this, is you got to research, you got to do your homework, and please try to deal locally because we, we're having, Florida's having this influx of people from all over the country coming in here. They're not, they're subcontracting the work. It's just it's not a good thing. Just please, anyone listening today, do your due diligence and, and don't just buy from someone knocking on the door just because it sounds good. Yeah, I mean, we've had a history of being particularly vulnerable to hurricane chasing out of staters who have done no justice to homeowners who've hired them, not just for solar, but for other stuff as well. So then, you know, we had some laws change. You have to be licensed in the state of Florida, but there's opportunistic people who are licensed in Florida, Florida that will, uh, you know, take payments from out of state contractors to operate under their license. It's, it's not allowed. It's unscrupulous. And at the end of the day, the customer ends up, you know, paying the price for it. And that's what we, we almost see ourselves more as educators at this point than anything else. People need to be aware that, that this is happening. It's, it's a great thing. If you're dealing with the right company and you get the right product and, you know, someplace like, you know, here you can you can walk into this office at any time. You can talk to management, to staff. You can see the materials. That's what I would look for. If I was going to make an investment, it doesn't have to be us, but it's got to be somebody that operates like us. Because if I have something go wrong, I don't want to call a number that's been disconnected. That's right. Not good. Yeah. And, I mean, you employ people in the local area. I mean, there's just a plethora of benefits to hiring somebody local. So, speaking of which... What exactly is your footprint for installing and servicing solar, Bill? So we stay really kind of on the east coast from Volusia County all the way up to uh, Duval County. Okay. We, every now and then we'll go to Nassau if somebody begs us to. But I yeah. love Nassau County, but it's quite a drive. But you know, we, we service a pretty good area. It's probably 120 miles one way and maybe 70 miles the other. You know? Gotcha. Yeah, that, that's a decent We don't go to Orlando as well. Because no, we got plenty to do over here. We've got 22, 20. 3,000 customers now, and they all are special. They're friends, and they need service. We're going to be there for them. Yeah, 23,000 customers. That's a testament in itself. It's taken a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, a couple of minutes, huh? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, absolutely. But what about, you may, you may mention about uh, you know, grid down and, uh, and and everything like that. And th there, there's, there's some other products out there that I think are pretty cool for backup power. You know, maybe if you didn't want to do the full Monty with the, the solar panels, the whole nine yards, uh, you, you could probably talk about that because you're pretty with it. Yeah, I mean, actually, as we're recording this video, there's a you know video that's airing on our YouTube channel right now discussing you know grid down and how it you know, affects everybody in the country except for the handful of people who are truly off grid. And you know I know that, well, the only thing that stays the same in life is that nothing stays the same. And obviously, you've evolved you know over the past 48 years. And, uh, you know, we had an off-camera discussion with regards to, you know, some of the, the new things that you'll be doing, uh, you know, this year. And I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. Would like to have you back at some point in the future to actually dive in the to grid down in a little bit more depth um, as far as it being a gateway to, to getting to a complete system. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I think, I think Chris, the important thing is uh, to convey is, it, 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 it's not okay just to do nothing because at some point in time, something could happen that we have no control over, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's just a man-made catastrophe or if it's, or if it's something that's happened globally, 
don't don't just think that things are going to be okay. Yeah, Take exactly. Action, you know. Yep. All right. Well, listen, Bill, appreciate you coming on uh, the channel, and uh, we'll look forward to another interview with you sometime uh, later this year. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bill.